Welcome to the BVTV Network, coming to you from the UK studios of BizVision. I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher. This is episode three in the BVTV Be Prepared trilogy with finance expert and author Murray Sabrin. Hello for the final time, Murray. Thank you, Malcolm. It's great to be with you again. I just love your energy. You put the fun into finance. Well, this is why I, I taught for 35 years, and it was a joy to teach students about what I learned as an undergraduate and as a, a business economist and a, an investment analyst. I think business is so exciting because that's what makes life worthwhile, is all the wonderful things that come out of the business community because of the great entrepreneurs, the great visionaries, the great inventors that are out there. And that's what one of the things I realized in writing this book is no matter what shape the economy is in, people will always innovate and invent. And therefore, like, Mal, uh, like Warren Buffett says, he, he thinks America's best days are ahead of us because of all the great things that are happening in the business world. Yeah, I, I love the fact that business um, is not evil. Um, it can be used for good as it's happening at the moment in many cases. Murray, we all know that, that change is the only constant. Sometimes you create change and other times it's thrust upon you. I guess it would be good to know when change is about to happen and the economy's boom cycle is about to end. So what are the, are the ways that you suggest our visionary entrepreneur needs to know in order to identify and survive the bust? Well, the, the data are pretty clear as to when the bust will begin. If you look at the uh, yield curve, that is the relationship of interest rates to time. And uh, historically, the yield curve is rising, which means short-term rates are lower than long-term rates. When inflation heats up like it is now, the Federal Reserve gets very nervous because public opinion says you got to stop the inflation. So the Federal Reserve only has one tool to stop inflation, which is to slow down or end the printing of money and raise interest rates. That was happening at the end of 2019, the beginning of 2020, when the yield curve inverted. So when the yield curve inverts, when short-term rates go above long-term rates, that's the countdown to the recession. And historically, it's about six months to a year when the yield curve inverts to a recession happening. Now, in 2020, <coughs> the yield curve inverted very quick uh, 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 at the end of the year, 2019. And then uh, Donald Trump, as president, was criticizing the Federal Reserve for its uh, tight money policies, and they reversed course. And of course, the inf uh, lockdowns happened, and the Fed just put the uh, foot on the gas and just flooded the economy with money. So we were headed for a recession uh, in 2020 in instead of a the implosion, which happened. So what I'm looking at now is if the Fed keeps on tightening money over the next uh, six months, a year, and the yield curve inverts, we're probably going to have a, a recession in 2023, but no later than I think 2024, because that will reveal uh, the distortions that have been built up during what people have called the everything bubble since the Great Recession of 2007-2009. Yeah, that, that's quite frightening. That um, so immediacy that you're talking about there, because you know we're only just the businesses are only just managing to move from survival in. 2020 in 2020 through to possibly pivoting in 2021 and perhaps towards growth in 2022 you know that many of them still haven't got it uh, their act their act together you know hospitality for example yeah. is still so sort of suffering so you're saying that very soon we're going to have something else to challenge us well, th th this is what is so interesting about what's happening in terms of public policy. You have the the, uh, the consequences of the lockdowns, the uh, the mandates, and what have you, and so you have hospitality and other industries that are affected by this. And then you have on top of that layer is a government spending, and on top of that you have the business cycle. So you have so many forces affecting the economy. For the average entrepreneur, it's hard to sort it out because then mm. they don't have the expertise in sorting out all the economic data that's out there. But they do know what's happening in their business, what's happening in their region, their community, and what's happening in their industry. So they have a, sort of a, an ear to the ground of what's happening, but uh, sometimes they will overexpand during a boom, thinking that good times are going to last forever, like we had with the housing bubble. There were developers who were buying land, thinking that the housing uh, bubble was going to last for a long, long time. And then when the rug was pulled, uh, the whole thing came crashing down. Uh, and so did Las Vegas and other uh, places that were adversely affected by the housing yeah. bubble bu bursting. So again, today, it's just a matter of what can 
an entrepreneur do to make sure that when uh, the bus does arrive down the road, they are prepared so they don't lose customers, that they don't have to lay off key personnel. And managing a business during a bust is very, very challenging because mm -hmm. you think the world is crashing the, the world is crashing around you and you say, I better cut my costs in order to survive when it may be that you may have to do something in order to keep your empl key employees around, make sure your customers are getting good value for your product or service so you can survive the bust because so many businesses don't know how to do that and they mismanage their business during the bust and therefore they go out of business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, both of us have been around for a little while, haven't we? And, Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I, I have, um, I, I've presented over the years uh, tactics of tough times, and I just keep dusting it down every few years or so and bringing it back out again. You know, and there are very simple things you do, and you were just pointing out there. You know, looking after your good customers getting to know your good customers and, and making certain that they're going to be loyal customers during that, during a uh, possible um, bust time is going to be really helpful to you, isn't it? Uh, making sure you're looking up to your staff. The great, the great resignations happened in America and, and lots of companies are, um, are suddenly realized that they haven't been looking after the staff. So that's almost like a bust time, isn't it? There's no question about it. I keep on seeing signs all over Southwest Florida where we're living that, uh, the stores are looking for personnel, $15, $17 an hour, well above the federal minimum wage and well above uh, the state minimum wage. People, companies are desperate for, for personnel in order to service the customer properly. And that's what business is all about, is what value are you providing customers? What infrastructure do you have within the business in order to make that happen and to have repeat customers, especially in businesses where uh, it's not a high priced item where you may see the customer once every year, five years, three years, five years, whatever the case may be. But you want re uh, reoccurring customers. And sometimes you may have to what? Have a lower bar profit margin during the <clears throat> bust in order to have that greater profit margin during the boom because... Uh, you may have to cut costs, which most uh, companies do. I, 40 years ago, I was laid off during the 1981-82 recession as, uh, when I worked as an investment analyst because the company had to reduce their cost structure. So I know what it feels like when you lose your job, when uh, uh, cash flow becomes a problem for companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just feel that sometimes that... Um, you know, entrepreneurs, because they're so busy, busy doing it, doing it, you know, uh, as the saying goes, working in the business, not on it, that they miss certain vital signs that, you know, that uh, when you go to the doctors for a checkup, they're looking for vital signs, aren't they? You know, the entrepreneurs miss, miss, miss some of them. Can you just quickly give us just two or three that you think that they should keep their finger on the pulse all the time? Well, I think one of the things is, is, is key is uh, my late brother-in-law had a pharmacy in upstate New York, and he used to do, as I remember visiting him, he used to keep a tally of the daily receipts so, so he knows exactly what's happening. And he had that business for a long, long time. I think that biz businesses should be doing that, seeing exactly what their uh, sales are uh, every day, every week, every month. And if they're a longtime business owner, you have a good feel of seasonal patterns. You have a good feel for holiday patterns and so on and so forth. And uh and then w w speak to your employees because they're the ones that are on the floor. See yeah. what the customers are looking for when it comes to clothing, whether it's looking for uh, uh, home goods, things like that. And you get a sense from the employees what customers are looking for and what maybe you can do to, with promotions. I, there are promotions constantly. My, my inbox is full of promotions from <laughs> customers these days saying, hey, we have this 25% off or we have buy one, get one 50% off. So again, you may have to be very creative in your marketing during a, a down cycle in order to to uh, keep your customers and keep your um, uh, cash flow up. Mm, yeah. Now, I think your book, Murray, by the way, I, I just want to gain to praise it because it's, as you quite rightly say, it's easy reading. It is easy reading uh, as opposed to some finance books where you fall asleep after the third page. This is easy reading. It, it also drags you in, but you end up learning. And that's the most important thing, I think, from a, any book. Thanks, Marie. Now, let's give viewers and listeners details of your URL, your website address, which obviously viewers can see on the screen behind me. Um, but for listeners, let me spell it out. It's all the W's, all the W's. Murray, which is spelled M-U-R-R-A-Y. Murray Sabrin, which is spelled S-A-B-R-I-N. Murray Sabrin. Murray's book, this one, called 
Navigating the Boom Bust Cycle, an Entrepreneur's Survival Guide, and it's published by Business Expert Press. Every entrepreneur starts his or her journey in a mood of confidence. If they don't, they shouldn't start, and they certainly won't attract investors. However, Every entrepreneur should, in my mind, also aim to be visionary, keep looking ahead, especially for possible impact, impactful uh, changes or dangers. Across this BVTV trilogy, I suggest to you that author Murray Zebrin has provided you with exactly the right knowledge that an authentic, visionary entrepreneur needs. Thanks, Murray. Thank you, Malcolm. It's been a pleasure going over some of the key points that business uh, entrepreneurs need in order to manage the boom-bust cycle for, the, for themselves.